24 years ago, I entered the halls of Congress with a mandate from the Filipino people as Senator of the Republic. That was way back in 1998. I was 38 years old, a novice in the political arena. Since then, I've worked for 21 years, 18 years, three terms in the Senate, and three years as your Congresswoman of the Lone District of Antique. It has been tremendously fulfilling, an ongoing journey, an enduring one, because today marks the 22nd year as your lawmaker. I stand honored and proud before you to accept my mandate once again to be your senator for the fourth time, the most senior in terms of tenure. I once said that my education at the University of the Philippines and the National Defense College of the Philippines my two decades of work as a journalist prepared me for the Senate. That my three terms in the Senate readied me for public service in Antique. What did the past three years teach me, I dare say? The three years I devoted to serving our home province have reminded me of what I came here for. It was indeed arduous, daunting, challenging, but also an opportune time to be your Congresswoman. I served Antique with all my heart, precisely when the world was stricken by a global health crisis that exacted an enormous economic toll on humanity. I saw firsthand the crippling consequences of the pandemic. I witnessed how our Kasiman was desperately grappled with the challenges, from looking for income, medicine, and food to coping with isolation and uncertainty. The past three years have also been the best years of Antique, where countless, numerous jobs were created, people were cared for in every respect. People finally said they felt the presence of government being brought to the farthest barangays of our province, something perhaps, as people say, never experienced for a long, long time. Today, as I return to the Senate, I realized that while we tirelessly worked and successfully enacted laws, established programs, and ushered in policies, these must be translated into tangible benefits for the nation, for our people. We may have tossed the pebble into the water, but its ripples must extend to the farthest reaches, the countryside, the grassroots, the poorest of the poor and the most vulnerable. I ask myself again, what ails our country? Because while we advocated, shepherded, enacted laws on health, education, livelihood, environment, social services, our people are still in dire need of help. What continues to plague us? How do we translate all these laws into substantial benefits that would extend to the farthest reaches of our 7,100 seven islands. How do we recover from the afflictions of the last few years, the twin crisis of climate change and the pandemic? Trabaho at kabuhayan. Ito ang dapat natin patuloy na isulong lalo na hindi patapos ang ating laban sa kasalukuyang pandemya at sa krisis ng klima. Please allow me to run through some of the initiatives that are in my heart and in my mind as I prepare for my biggest role in nation building. First, the pathway towards pandemic recovery is through the economic empowerment of every Filipino. In 1998, we enacted the MSME law, micro, small, and medium enterprises. They know, and you know, they account for 99.5% of the nation's economy. The sector is responsible for more than 5.3 million jobs, or 62.66% of our total employment. While they make up the overwhelming majority of businesses, MSMEs are also the most vulnerable to economic shocks. And as principal author of this law in my second term, I believe that our development should be pursued with the end goal that everyone should benefit from the country's economic gains. Progress should not only be measured by the country's infrastructure or urban development alone, not just by the number of highways and airports and flyovers and buildings or shopping centers. Instead, we should measure our advancement by looking 
at the quality of life, the welfare and well-being of each and every Filipino. I've witnessed the untapped possibilities of the millions of Filipinos, our weavers, our entrepreneurs, our indigenous peoples, our cultural creatives. So much potential for growth in the rural areas as we have done in the past three years. We need to expand the reach to include our local entrepreneurs and indigenous communities and ensure that everyone benefits from government programs such as the MSME law, like what we did in our province. And during my last three years with Governor Cadiao as my ardent partner, I attested to the vital role of MSMEs in employment generation. Some of them are housed in our restored old capital building, our economic growth, our cultural identity, our environmental protection, our visits to the countryside made me realize that safeguarding our identity, our beliefs, whether tangible or intangible, they are as crucial as the economic and political affair of our nations. Panay, the island to which we belong, is filled with cultural treasures. The region has exquisite, exquisite weaving. Proudly, we wear our patajong. I am happy we have revived this industry. I proudly wear a barangay-based microenterprise from Bagtason. I proudly wear a 185 pesos retaso earring. I proudly wear marikina-made shoes hand-painted by a millennial. Our region in Panay has exquisite treasures, and we've established several weaving centers, not just in Antique, but nationwide, even as far as Cebutu Island and Tawi-Tawi with their tutup weaves, and in Kianga, Nifugao of the Bule family, and soon we will open the National Museum of Textiles in Antique, as well as in Butuan in Caraga. We have conducted trade fairs to promote our local products. With the support of government, the full implementation of MSME, they became powerful platforms for the promotion of viable rural livelihoods and for cultural preservation, for the social economic empowerment of our indigenous peoples, of which we have in our province, our apis, ay irainon bukidnons, and for environmental protection. In light of our fight against the unprecedented health crisis, we have to bolster the efficiency of our health sector as part of our vital investments for the human capital. We need the full and effective implementation of the UHC, which I co-authored and funded, RA11223. The law automatically enrolls all Filipinos in the National Health Insurance Program. It guarantees equitable access to quality and affordable health care and protection against financial risk. Universal Health Care Act in my last year in the Senate, which was approved. It has been three years since, yet Filipinos are desperately trying to gain access to the assistance intended for them. There is still much inequity in our health care system, and I promise I will endeavor to correct this. More than this, we have to make sure that healthcare facilities are available, fully equipped, sufficient number of health workers to effectively cater to the medical and health needs to our estimated 109 million population. So glad I was able to restore at least nine hospitals in our province pre-pandemic and to put at least the basic health facilities before pandemic in Antique. We were able to ensure the construction, rehabilitation, the expansion of nine local hospitals, all under the DOH Health Facilities Enhancement Program. And no less than Mayor T. of Libertad almost cried when we inaugurated her polyclinic. She said, it's been a dream of four decades. So I love to make your dreams come true. And together with all other elected officials, we will make every Antiqueño and hopefully every Filipino's dream come true. The benefits Filipino get from the UHC law may be deemed useless if we do not have health facilities and infrastructure or the professionals that can keep 
with the technological advancements and cope with the threat of new and emerging diseases. Our goal should be to achieve an equitable, nature-positive, carbon-neutral, economic recovery and a sustainable, regenerative future. Saka ko na po papaliwanag yan sa Senado. We need a more productive and proactive and integrated approach to fight pandemics and climate change. But we now know that alongside investments in research and healthcare, we need to address the problem at its root. And what is it? The destruction of nature. To save ourselves, we must save nature. Protecting nature is our fundamental, optimum, and most cost-effective line of defense against future pandemics and climate change. Since 1998, I've legislated numerous important environmental laws. I urge both houses of Congress to ensure that the national budget is a pandemic recovery budget, one that is aligned to the climate pathway. There is no recovery from COVID-19 unless it is aligned with environment and climate. Rather than just building back better, as they always say, we must focus on the future and build right at first sight. I hope to develop legislation utilizing a build with nature approach as we move towards a shift in paradigm from fighting against nature to working with it. Nature-based solutions will be the new currency as the world works towards resilience. Climate change, as I've explained numerous times, is not merely an environmental issue. It is an all-encompassing threat to our basic human rights, the right to food, the right to water, health, shelter, decent livelihood, and life itself. So the last few years have shown us how we are living in a world with great fragility and complexity. We must contend with the constant danger posed by the pandemic, the rising inequality among people, the threats of climate change, the energy crisis, overpopulation, and food security. It will be our task to respond to this new and changing world. Together, let us rise from the pandemic and survive the climate crisis. Again, ask yourselves, what ails the Filipino? What ails our nation? 24 years ago, I entered the halls of the Senate with sheer determination to make a difference in the lives of every Filipino man, woman, and child. Today, I return with greater wisdom, knowledge, passion, discipline, and greater determination to make this world better, better than when I found it. I am humbled by the overwhelming mandate I've received from more than 24,264,969 Filipinos to win in every municipality and in almost each number one of the 590 barangays in our dear province. I am overflowing with gratitude. Like the past 24 years, I will carry and keep ablaze the torch of inclusive unity, of grassroots reform, and equitable, sustainable, good governance alongside the new leadership. Durugid nga salamat sa aking mga palangga na kasimanwa. Hindi po ako tatayo bilang isang senador na higit sa 24.2 million. Kung hindi po sa mga naituro nyo sa akin, sa nakaraang tatlong taon. Marami man akong alam, marami po akong, mas marami akong natutunan sa antike, sa mga kahalagahan ng lokal na pamahalaan at pangangailangan ng taong bayan hanggang pinakasiksik na barangay sa tuktok ng bundok gaya ng maadyos sa pandan at sa lahat ng pangangailangan ng mga nasa karagatan at kabundukan. At gaya ng sinabi ko nung kampanya, hindi ko po kayo iiwanan. Lalo lang umigting ang aking pagtulong sa inyo kasama si Congressman-elect A.A. Legarda, si Governor Dodod Cadiao, at lahat po ng ating bagong halal na mga leader ng ating mahal na probinsya. Sa mga nanonood po sa Facebook, sa buong bansa, sa mga senior citizens, at sa ating mga millennials, sa kababaihan, sa lahat po, ng mga ama ng tahanan 
at lahat po ng mga Pilipino. Maraming salamat. I take each vote of the more than 24.2 million very seriously. And I am here for you in the next six years and well, well beyond with God's help. Maraming salamat. Mahal ko po kayong lahat. Palangga ko kamong.